Syria the country. as a responsible party in the Middle East. This, this is a critical opportunity for America. And what I'm afraid of is we've watched over the past year or so. First, the president said, well, we'll let the UN deal with it. And Assad, excuse me, Kofi Annan came in and said, we're going to try to have a ceasefire. That didn't work. Then it went to the Russians and said, let's see if you can do something. We should be playing the leadership role there, not on the ground with military. We should play the leadership role. We are playing leadership role. We organized the Friends of Syria. We are mobilizing humanitarian support and support for the opposition. And we are making sure that those we help are those who will be friends of ours in the long term and friends of our allies in the region over the long term. But we are going back to Libya because this is an example of how we make choices. When we went into Libya, and we were able to immediately stop the massacre there because of the unique circumstances and the coalition that we had helped to organize. We also had to make sure that Muammar Gaddafi didn't stay there. And to the governor's credit, he supported us going into Libya and the coalition that we organized. But when it came time to making sure that Gaddafi did not stay in power, that he was captured, Governor, your suggestion was that uh, this was mission creep. That this was mission muddle. Imagine if we had pulled out at that point. Now, Muammar Gaddafi had more American blood on his hands than any individual other than Osama bin Laden. And so we were going to make sure that we finished the job. That's part of the reason why the Libyans stand with us. But we did so in a careful, thoughtful way, making certain that we knew who we were dealing with. Those forces of moderation on the ground were ones that we could work with. And we have to take the same kind of steady, thoughtful leadership when it comes to Syria. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, Governor, can I just ask you, would you go beyond what the administration would do? Like, for example, would you put in no-fly zones over Syria? I don't, I don't have our military involved in, in Syria. Uh, I, I don't think there's a, a necessity to put our military uh, in Syria at, at this stage. I don't anticipate that in the future. As I indicated, our objectives are to replace Assad and to have in place a new government which is friendly to us, a responsible government, if, if possible. And I want to make sure they get armed. And they have the arms necessary to defend themselves, but also to, to, remove, uh, to remove Assad. But I do not want to see a military involvement on the part of, of, our, of our troops. Uh, and this, this, isn't, this isn't going to be necessary. We, we have, with our partners in the region, we have sufficient resources to support those groups. But look, this has been going on for a year. This, is time. this should have been a time for American leadership. We should have taken a leading role, not militarily, but a leading role organizationally, governmentally, to bring together the parties there to find responsible parties. As you hear from intelligence sources even today, the, 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 the insurgents are highly disparate. They haven't come together. They haven't formed a unity group, a, co a council of some kind. That needs to happen. America can help that happen. And we need to make sure they have the arms they need to carry out the, the very important role, which is getting rid of Assad. Can we get a quick response from Assad? Because I want to ask I'll, 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 be, I'll be very quick. Uh, what you just heard Governor Romney said is uh, he doesn't have different ideas. Uh, and that's because we're doing exactly what we should be doing to try to promote uh, a moderate Syrian leadership and a, an effective transition so that we get Assad out. That's the kind of leadership we've shown. That's the kind of leadership we'll continue to show. May I ask you, uh, you know, during the Egyptian turmoil, uh, there came a point when you said it was time for President Mubarak to go. Uh, some in your administration uh, thought perhaps we should have waited a while on that. Uh, do you have any regrets about that? No, I don't. Because I think that America has to stand with democracy. The notion that we would have uh, tanks run over those young people who were in Tahrir Square, that is not the kind of American leadership that John F. Kennedy talked about 50 years ago. But what I've also said is that now that you have a democratically elected government in Egypt, they have to make sure that they take responsibility for protecting religious minorities. And we have put significant pressure on them to make sure they're doing it, to recognize the rights of women, which is critical throughout the region. These countries can't develop if young women are not given the kind of education that they need. They have to abide by their treaty with Israel. That is a red line for us.
，这对我们也是红线原则。那么，这实际上这是对于我们而言的这样一个基础。那么，这是我们打击恐怖主义的这样的一个底线。那么，我们也希望当地政府能够逐渐发展自己的这种经济。我们希望他们他们不断的进行成功的革新，能够让年轻人走向世界，他们要看到新的机会。这新的年轻人一代，他们希望能找到工作，他们自己的女儿儿儿女希望走向教育学校，他们希望能够看到未来生活的不断的繁荣。人民生活的提高，我们需要给他们一种感觉，让他们知道如何能够重建自己的国度。对于美国人而言，这就是他们能够重建的，这就是美国我们可以取得成功的之处了。那么，在过去呃十年里面的挑战，就是像。